we will get started for a very, very, very brief um, little program, if you want to call it a program. It's really a, more of a welcome and kind of an introduction and um, a little backdrop on uh, you know, why we're here and, and I guess what some of the possibilities are. But first of all, uh, I'm Francis Slay. I'm the mayor of the city of St. Louis. And I want to welcome all of you here to St. Louis for the Mississippi Rivers uh, City, Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative. Certainly want to especially welcome all the mayors, but you know, staff members, and I know a lot of participants, speakers that are here with us. Uh, we we uh, you know value your presence here, and I think you'll find that this is going to be a very productive, informative, and and empowering, um, an empowering session and and meetings that we're going to have here in St. Louis to equip us as mayors uh, in being able to take advantage uh, more of the rivers that we have to help uh, create um, uh, you know, better opportunities to protect the river, to preserve uh, the Mississippi River uh, for the best benefit of the people that we represent and the communities uh, that surround the river. And, and I think this is a great effort. I was very, very um, encouraged when I heard about this effort to get involved and I want to thank you all for joining. We have over 40 mayors, not all of them could be here, uh, that have joined the effort. Uh, but this is an opportunity for us uh, to better understand the challenges and the opportunity and to collectively come up uh, with a voice uh, in Washington to help us address this river in the best way we can for the benefit of our communities. We have uh, uh, we will be engaging uh, this week with the Army Corps of Engineers, with FEMA, the Association of State Floodplain Managers, Waterfront Development Corporations, the Delta Regional Authority, the EPA, and many others, who, many of whom are represented here this evening. The mayors will also be joined by the Chief of the U.S. Natural Resources Conservation Service and the CEO of the American Queen Steamboat Company. But first, um, I think uh, to, uh, to lay a really good foundation uh, from which we can build this organization and, um, and go forward with the meetings that we have, I want to recognize and welcome Mayor George Hartwell from Grand Rapids, Michigan, who's with us. Uh, he has joined us, uh, he has given us the benefit of his time, he's been very generous with that. He is the chairman of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Seaway Initiative the precursor effort to our own here in the for the St. Louis Missis, for the for the Mississippi River, uh, Colin Wellencamp, our director. He's our executive director of this organization, the Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative. Will inter formally introduce Mayor Hartwell. So, Colin. Thank you, Mayor Slay, and good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for, for coming. Uh, I just want to take a second to, to, to recognize and, and, and give some props to Mayor Slay. He was actually our, our founding member. He, he was the first mayor to join this organization. Um, so thank you, Mayor Slay, uh, for your leadership and your vision for this. We do have an initiative that is much closely related to our own, and it has made great strides in improving another critical natural resource for the United States, and that is the Great Lakes Cities, the St. Lawrence Seaway Cities Initiative. Um, it started about 10 years ago with the Northeast Midwest Institute, my, my parent organization, uh, with Mayor Daly of Chicago. And they have made great strides in improving the economy and the ecological condition of the Great Lakes region, both on the U.S. and Canadian side. It is an organization over 100 mayors, and it is an international effort. We thought that their past chairman, Mayor Hartwell of Grand Rapids, Michigan, would be a fantastic way to start out our own meeting to kind of talk about and hear from what can mayors do? How can mayors make a difference? How can they pull their voice together and, and not only help out their own individual communities, but also something as large as a 2,500 mile waterway that's part of the largest navigable river system on Earth. How, how do you get folks to do anything about that collectively? It's, it's tough. 
Well, you turn to a resource that has done it already, that similar, has similar size and, and quantity, and that's the Great Lakes. So Mayor Harwell has come from Grand Rapids, Michigan to help us with that and talk to us about what really is possible, what mayors can do to, to change, to be a game changer in this. So please welcome Mayor Hartwell. Thank you. Thanks, Colin, and uh, thank you, Mayor Slay. Thanks for hosting us. Uh, uh, you know, I had a I had a great PowerPoint presentation, and uh, when uh, Colin told me I couldn't use it uh, because of the venue, I thought, oh, nuts. Well, look at this. I mean, how could any PowerPoint on earth compare to uh, to this scenery? Uh, this is just great. So I'm happy not to be using a PowerPoint. I'd, I'd invite uh, any of you who are standing, if you, uh, if you want to, uh, there's still some seats. I'm going to be less brief than Mayor Slay was. Uh, so uh, if, uh, if, if you're more comfortable sitting, um, sooner or later I'll run out of light here and then, we'll, then I'll just stop. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you uh, on, this, on this effort and on, on starting this organization. Uh, 41 mayors uh, from uh, all 10 states up and down the Mississippi River uh, coming together to protect this uh, amazing and yet, as we all know, vulnerable waterway. Um, I, I am chair of, uh, 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 mayor of Grand Rapids and, and uh, former chair of the board of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. Um, if you're an infant, we're at best in the toddler stage, I guess you'd say, uh, being formed in uh, 2003 when uh, Mayor Richard Daly of Chicago and Mayor David Miller of uh, Toronto uh, invited mayors to, uh, throughout the Great Lakes to come together uh, to protect this natural asset. So uh, as Colin said, today we have uh, in the neighborhood of, one, of 100 member mayors from uh, the eight Great Lakes states and the two Canadian provinces uh, on the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence, uh, Ontario and Quebec. Uh, we're large cities and we're small cities, uh, but collectively we have, we represent, uh, um, uh, our member cities represent the po a population of 15 million people. Uh, our board is made up of uh, 16 mayors, uh, eight each from, uh, from Canada and the US. And uh, our current uh, chair is uh, Mayor uh, Tom Barrett of Milwaukee. We, we alternate uh, between Canada and US from year to year. Now those who know your geography may, may be saying, and I know a few of you have actually been to Grand Rapids, so you said, well, what, what, are you, what are you doing? You're not on the Great Lakes. What are you doing as a, uh, involved with this initiative? Well, Grand Rapids is situated uh, uh, on the banks of the Grand River, uh, the, the, the longest uh, river in the state of Michigan, which empties into Lake Michigan, uh, 32 miles after it passes through uh, uh, our beautiful city. Um, we draw our drinking water from Lake Michigan. Uh, we send uh, manufactured products uh, from Grand Rapids by, by road and by rail to deep water ports where they are um, exported throughout the Great Lakes region and, and beyond uh, to ports uh, throughout the world. Um, we are the exciting urban center, which is just a short hop from uh, some of the most uh, beautiful beaches in the world. Uh, so you don't think Lake Michigan is, is important to our economy, is important to our life. So as mayor of Grand Rapids, uh, I jumped on the opportunity to join this uh, cities initiative, as we call it, uh, the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative, um, because I know that protecting our Great Lakes is protecting my citizens' quality of life and, and protecting our economy. So why did these cities come together to create this Great Lakes St. Lawrence uh, initiative. 20% of the surface fresh water in the globe is in the Great Lakes. If the Great Lakes were, were spread out evenly across the land mass area of the continental United States, it would form a pond nine feet deep. If you could take the shoreline of the Great Lakes and, and straighten them out, you could draw a line from Chicago to Perth, Australia. Now the, the white sand beaches on the east side of Lake Michigan, if any of you have ever been there, you know that they're uh, rated among the finest in the world, uh, beautiful white sand beaches. 
Uh, in fact, tourism uh, in the Great Lakes uh, is valued at $62 billion in annual wages uh, in employing 1.5 million people in the Great Lakes region. Those are just the U.S. jobs. It, and included in that number is a $7 billion uh, sports and commercial fishing industry. Uh, over a quarter million American jobs are directly involved in the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence uh, shipping uh, uh, industry. Uh, short sea shipping alone uh, saves $3.6 billion a year versus uh, over the road or, or, or rail transport options. And then the, the historical uh, cultural value of the basin, I would argue, is, is beyond measure. It's, it's home to uh, indigenous First Nations people, and it's a, it truly is a spiritual resource uh, for, uh, for people throughout the region. Uh, many, many of us see the waters of the Great Lakes uh, as a sacred trust, the, sort of the spiritual soul of our region. And then there's the importance of drinking water for 40 million people in the Great Lakes Basin. Uh, my city's one of those communities that, uh, that draws our drinking water from uh, up a 32-mile up a pipe from uh, Lake Michigan to, uh, to serve Grand Rapids. On, a, on an average day, we suck 51 million gallons of water out of Lake Michigan to serve our city and surrounding customer, uh, water customer communities. So our lives, quite literally, uh, you could say, depend on this uh, clean, freshwater body that has uh, sustained us for generations and simply must sustain us uh, into the future. Uh, the Great Lakes are uh, a treasure of inestimable value. You know, we can put some value on, on commerce and tourism, uh, but what's the value of this amazing natural asset? Uh, uh, for generations to come, and how do we assure uh, that it will remain uh, intact, uh, protected, and preserved for future generations? You see, the, the, the Great Lakes is uh, under attack. Uh, there are threats to water quality uh, from many sources. Uh, 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 point source pollution is probably the most obvious. Industrial uh, pollution and uh, combined sewer overflows contribute significantly to Great Lakes water quality, um, uh, feedlots, um, crop fertilization uh, contribute their share of, of phosphorus to the waters, uh, airborne discharges from coal-fired uh, power plants uh, and, uh, and aerial discharges from factories uh, uh, further compromise water quality. And so while it's true that the, the, the EPA and, and state uh, departments of environmental quality have been aggressive in in enforcing against uh, um, municipal government and, uh, and industrial polluters, uh, they've been less aggressive, I would argue, in, in uh, addressing agricultural runoff, and they seem virtually toothless when it comes to taking on the electric uh, generation industry. There have also been long-standing and, and growing concerns about water quantity in the Great Lakes. Uh, from past efforts to the, literally to load uh, fresh water onto, onto ocean-going tankers to, to transport it to China, uh, to uh, uh, our paranoia over uh, water-starved Arizona uh, sucking our water down to keep their golf courses green. Uh, we Great Lakes denizens keep a watchful eye open for, for water thieves. The biggest thief, though, it may be the um, maybe climate change, uh, and, and we've been increasingly concerned about the impacts of climate change. The science is, uh, is certainly evolving, uh, and, and new models are being developed, but the prevailing model today suggests that higher uh, air and water temperatures uh, result in, uh, uh, in the lakes, result in increased evaporation, uh, and therefore in declining water levels. One of the greatest threats to our, uh, our Great Lakes comes from the form of non-native uh, species of plants and fish and crustaceans that arrive uninvited in ballast water of uh, ocean-going ships and have established breeding populations that uh, choke out or starve out uh, native species. Uh, you know all about these invasives. In fact, some of your worst offenders uh, have entered the Mississippi Basin from the Great Lakes. 
Uh, and, uh, and certainly today, one of our biggest threats is traveling up the Mississippi uh, headed uh, to the Great Lakes. Uh, the Asian carp would do more damage to our Great Lakes fishery and, and recreational boating industry than a, than a Martian invasion. Uh, and uh, we are, I mean, hardly a night goes by that one of my television stations isn't showing film footage of, of these uh, uh, giant leaping uh, fish. Um, and so why did the, these mayors form this uh, cities initiative? Why are mayor, more mayors joining every year? Because we love our lakes with a passion that is unmatched, uh, or at least equal, maybe I should say, to the passion that you have for this mighty waterway. So our alliance was uh, forged to provide an outlet for that passion, uh, to provide a collective voice where uh, individual voices have maybe been drowned out in the, in the uh, uh, political static. Uh, we have a strong advocacy thrust. We lobby Washington, uh, we lobby Ottawa, and every state and provincial uh, government. Uh, when we show up uh, for or against a piece of legislation, we represent 100 cities with over 15 million, 15 million population. Legislators listen to that. Uh, when we want to be heard on matters of policy, agency directors make the time. Ambassadors open their doors and talk to us about issues facing the Great Lakes. Uh, we stopped the U.S. Coast Guard from uh, when they pro proposed a uh, live fire automatic weapons training exercises in the Great Lakes. Uh, we joined the effort to keep BP Petroleum from increasing discharges of toxic waste from their Whiting, Indiana uh, refinery. Uh, we played a, a lead role in halting transportation of nuclear, nuclear, nuclear fuel through the uh, Great Lakes across the, the waters. Uh, we've, we have uh, called for effective and responsible management of shale gas uh, extraction uh, in our region. We've also worked closely with the uh, U.S. Coast Guard and the, and the EPA on drafting ballast water um, discharge standards. We've worked with the EPA, the White House, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers on basin separation. In fact, we led the two uh, million dollar study of the Chicago area uh, uh, waterways, which concluded that separating the Great Lakes Basin from the Mississippi Basin was not only uh, a good idea, restoring the natural divide, if you will, but that it was also uh, technically feasible. So if advocacy is our first passion, then uh, education is our second. Uh, that means uh, first and foremost, educating ourselves. Um, we, like you uh, this, uh, this week, uh, have meaty conference workshops where we share best practices. We host webinars for our members and their, uh, and their municipal staff. We bring in top speakers uh, from uh, throughout the, the, uh, the region on issues of water protection. Why we've even been known to exchange uh, valuable information guaranteed to improve municipal performance over many a glass of scotch at the end of the day. But we're also about teaching others. Uh, we've, uh, ad we've adopted uh, important standards and protocols on such things as water conservation, uh, pharmaceutical and uh, medical waste, stormwater management, beach quality monitoring, and most recently, uh, sustainable cities practices. Uh, we generate uh, materials to educate our members. We, uh, we host competitions, best practice competitions, uh, in which cash awards are given to winning communities. And we teach, 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 teach uh, in the halls of Congress and in Parliament uh, and in the state and provincial capitals. Um, our website, uh, if, you, uh, if you wish to look at it, GLSL Cities, uh, provides a compendium of studies uh, by member cities and, and others, which can be a marvelous resource not only for our members, but, but for others. Beyond education and, and advocacy, the Cities Initiative functions to provide a vehicle for amplifying the voice of mayors. Uh, just like in legislative advocacy, uh, one lonely voice is uh, often uh, not heard silenced by the sheer power of the opposition, so too in matters of, of policy or uh, state or federal agreements. Uh, 
even in our case, international treaties. One mayor, no matter how um, articulate uh, or, or loud uh, she or he may be, uh, it is often uh, not able to catch the attention of the powerful. But, but through our collective uh, action, we can speak with one voice and make that one voice heard in the places where it needs to be heard. So we, we have had a seat at the table for important national and international um, uh, binational treaty and, and protocol developments. Uh, uh, most recently, the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement uh, between the U.S. and Canada, which was uh, uh, signed last week Friday after two years of negotiations and, and hearings. Um, we were part of those negotiations. We've been part of, we were part of the negotiations for the Canada-Ontario uh, uh, Agreement, and we're, and we're at the table with the uh, development of the St. Lawrence pr Plan. And when the Congress of the United States was uh, considering the approval of the Great Lakes Compact, uh, it was the city's initiative that testified before the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee and, and helped to win support for this important water protection agreement. You are following in the same path that, that we are. Uh, we have nearly 10 years of experience, which is just enough to say this works. Maybe not enough to prove that it can be sustainable over time, but enough to know that it's important enough that we simply have to find the resources uh, to sustain it. You and we have a common mission to protect these great bodies of water and, and to enhance the quality of life of those living along these bodies of water. I, I looked at your five focus areas and, and with the substitution of uh, Great Lakes water levels for your flooding and floodplains issue, we might be looking at the same exact uh, uh, set of focus areas. Since we have so much in common, um, I, I would suggest that we ought to look for joint cause uh, and uh, joint action around some important federal water initiatives. I mean, think of the collective impact uh, of, of one voice representing the cities of two basins uh, with combined member uh, city populations approaching 20 million. Between us, our, our basins supply drinking water to nearly 20% of the nation's population. What a voice we would have if we were to speak together. And imagine what we could do together if we joined forces on a basin separation plan. Both the Great Lakes and the, and the Mississippi River uh, are threatened because of the uh, unnatural uh, connection that happened 100 years ago in Chicago. Um, we together could do something about that. Cities hold the key to a sustainable future. Cities are the source and the fountain of innovation. Uh, commerce flows in the blood of cities. Um, the great educational institutions uh, are in cities and, and the knowledge of the ages resides in our libraries and the history of America in our cities' museums. Cities can be gritty when we need to be gritty, and we can be poetic when the times call for poetry. Cities have backbone, and cities have brains. You need something done? Ask the mayor of a city to do it. And our cities, these great guardian cities are the natural assets of the Mississippi River and the Great Lakes. We have a special obligation. We need to marshal the innovation and the muscle, the, the grit and the poetry, and put them in the service of this most sacred obligation, the protection, restoration, and management of these powerful yet vulnerable waters. Think of a sunrise uh, viewed from uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, uh, or from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or, or a sunset from Natchez, uh, Mississippi, or, or Ludington, Michigan. Think of, the, of a day on the water in uh, a steam-powered uh, boat uh, decked out with uh, red, white, and blue bunting, uh, or, or on a sailboat cruising the islands of the Georgian Bay. 
Think of, the, think of, a, of a river cat or a Chinook salmon bending a rod. Think of a day of walking along the shoreline uh, or an evening of viewing the waters uh, uh, as they reflect the stars. These are our waters. They are our sacred trust. If cities do not bend the bow to protect them, if cities do not bend the back to lift them to a safer place, then these waters, these magnificent waters will only be degraded and we will only be able to say to our grandchildren, I remember when I was a child how the Mississippi fed my soul. Mayors, I charge you as the stewards of great cities, protect these waters. Stand against anything that would degrade them. Fight for the resources to protect them. Join forces through this powerful new organization to rewrite the future of the river that your grandchildren might say. Remember when the Mississippi faced destruction and remember how our four bears saved it and left it lovely for us. This is your legacy. This is your legacy. Claim it today. Thanks for listening. It's too dark to see anything anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Hartwell, and uh, thank you so much for, you know, taking your some special time to come down and visit with us, to share with us your experience, uh, your insight, and to provide us with inspiration as we move forward in our efforts to address the, the issues, the challenges, and the opportunities uh, for the Mississippi River that is flowing right behind me here uh, this evening. Uh, this concludes our formal um, program this evening. I did want to recognize, I neglected earlier, um, Amy Lampy, who is, works with St. Louis Development Corporation, is with us and worked a lot in helping us organize this. Thank you, Amy, and Amy will be around. I know Otis uh, Williams was around. I don't know if he still is. Oh, Otis is here. I'm sorry. Otis is here. I didn't see Otis, uh, who's uh, with St. Louis Development Corporation as well, and has really taken the lead um, on my behalf in, in helping us with this. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, uh, I look forward to seeing you right here on this floor in the Gateway East room at 8 o'clock a.m. Also, if anyone is interested in serving on the executive board or being a co-chair of this effort, uh, please see Colin over here. We, will, we are going to have uh, kind of an organizational meeting of the uh, of executive board. It will be temporary, and then we'll talk about how we move forward and then uh, move forward ultimately in creating some bylaws and do that. So that would, is what the uh, exec, it'll be a 10-member executive board as we, as we see, but that's not, not engraved in stone. Uh, and so anybody who wants to be involved in that, please feel free to do so. So I hope um, you have a nice evening, and I look forward to seeing you at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.